something I see quite often is how do you kill Rasiel of Efficiently. How do you kill this boss because it blows me the hell up because he does so much damage and he's pretty damn difficult This is a boss that a lot of beginner PBMers struggle with and so in this video I am going to be giving you guys not just a guide because there's plenty of guides out there I have one myself as well and which will be linked in the description But more tips and things that you may be doing wrong or things that you can apply to your kills at Raziel To actually make it a lot easier So if you've seen a guide and you've tried the bosses a few times and you're still struggling and you're not really too sure why This is the video for you now just so you know i'm not just talking rubbish i have 865 rational kills my personal record was 52.8 seconds but this was before the necromancy nerf and now i usually get around about between 1 minute 10 and 1 minute 20 on average every now and again of course some kills go over that's just the way it is and while i'm sure there is plenty of people who are doing better kills this is focused on of course the people beginning with ratio like i said and uh, i'm actually getting efficient kills so you can do this boss properly okay so well, let's go so the very first thing you should consider when looking at killing Rasiel is if you are looking to get the actual fast kill times and also make the game a lot easier is all of the extra DPS buffs. Now, you're going to probably know about these, but missing out on any of them makes a big difference. These include the Salve Amulet E, the Undead Slayer perk and the Undead Slayer ability. These aren't exactly the cheapest things to get. The ability codex, I believe, being the most expensive one. The Salve Amulet, of course, is just from a quest. So once you do the quest, it's actually free to get anyway. And the perk on its own isn't too difficult to get either. Depending on the combination you want to add it with, though, the price could definitely vary. Now, I'm going to mention these first because a lot of people will take on Rasiel and expect to get around about the 1 minute 20 kill time. And you're not going to reach that if you don't have even just one of these perks. Like, it's going to make a big difference. These don't just give you a little bit of extra damage. They give a hell of a lot for example the undead slayer perk itself is going to give you an extra seven percent damage just to keep this in mind seven percent damage is worth noting for because if you go from a tier 95 curse to a tier 99 curse you're not getting seven percent damage from that you're getting around about five or six percent i do believe and people are paying 700 mil for these at the moment as for the actual undead slayer ability you're going to be getting yourself 15 percent extra damage for 10 seconds now you might think only 10 seconds this is a big deal because if you use this in the middle of your main dps rotation where the, the majority of your damage is you're going to be getting a good amount of output from this so it does make a big difference and then finally the salve amulet e gives you a whopping 20 percent bonus damage when fighting undead enemies as well which of course rasiel obviously counts as so you absolutely want to have this as well this is just the amulet that you can just keep on i don't do any amulet switches or anything i just camp this the whole time it's just nice and easy so missing any of these is going to make a big difference now you can definitely still do the boss don't get me wrong i'm not saying you have to have these but if you are saying i'm getting blown up i can't even survive the full fight my kill times are like two and a half minutes or three minutes i don't know what the difference is and you don't have like even just one of these one extra one of these is going to make a big difference in your kill time and that could be one place to take a look at so if you haven't got them maybe take a look and see if you can get them before you go back to Rasiel because they're very important i'll link all of these in the description so you can find out how to get them if you're unsure and the next thing that I see quite often is people use the tank gear here. Now, tank gear is helpful. Don't get me wrong. The tank gear at this boss is definitely helpful because you take a lot of damage. And you, if you want to take that route, then by all means. However, I would actually recommend using the DPS gear because you take a shit ton of damage from this boss. And the best way to deal with that is to actually kill him quicker. Because the quicker you can kill him, the less time you're in the fight, the less food you're going to need to nom nom down. And also, you're going to be using soul split for the entire fight, which we'll talk about at some point in this video as well so the more you can do damage the more you're going to heal and getting through the kill faster makes your life a hell of a lot easier because the longer you're in there the longer he is absolutely tearing you to shreds also the tank gear kind of loses some of its value because he can't miss he's a necromancer necromancy cannot miss and so if you are using the darkness ability it won't matter and if you are using tank gear for the mischance it won't matter either now don't get me wrong there's still damage reduction on the tank gear of course and it also boosts your health by a hell of a lot but killing the boss quicker is probably going to pay off a little bit more as for what perks you want to have on your armor, I'll leave a link in the description for the optimal perk setup uh, from the RuneScape wiki. And on there, you can see what you can actually get to add in those slots. That being said, make sure you do have the Undead Slayer perk in one of those slots as well. 
I'm gonna interrupt the video just to remind you guys that there is merch available and you can grab yourself one of these potion lamps which just look epic in any setup really or you can get yourself a custom gaming mouse mount with your name on there and a little message from myself but you could grab them both in a combo and save a little bit of money too that being said any orders will ship pretty quickly now as i'm mostly caught up after the crazy demand from you guys thank you very much it helps an absolute ton there'll be a link for that in the description or the pinned comment let's get back to the video okay next up probably one of the most important ones as well which is why it's so early on is the actual Racial rotation. Now, what I mean by this is this fight is pretty much a static press the same buttons every time kind of fight. And if you do that and you press it in the right order, this fight becomes a hell of a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I am going to link in the description a link for the PVME Discord. In here, there is going to be a very specific set racial rotation. The PVME one is going to outweigh mine. It is. It is what it is. I did mine a lot earlier as well. And so theirs will be more accurate and up to date. So check that out and learn at least the first like part of it. You don't have to follow the entire thing all the way through. A lot of you guys are going to be like, oh, freak, man, I have to literally just follow this thing on paper over and over again. And if I get it wrong, it's bad. I have to get it exactly right. Don't panic. When you're learning these rotations, you don't have to like look at it and research it forever and like understand every single button that you press in order and then go in and do it perfectly. Just follow like the first bit and learn the, the bit when you're in living death. And then from there on, you can kind of improvise from there on out. But as long as you get the living death rotation down and correct in the initial like start of the fight, you're going to have a hell of a lot better time than if you didn't know what the hell you were doing when you go in. Because if you get the actual initial start down, the amount of DPS that you're going to throw out from that initial living death rotation is going to carry the fight most of the way through. By the time your living death ends, you're going to be almost to phasing the boss. Almost. You'll start to do like an extra death skulls or whatever. Maybe throw a volley of souls, something like that. And then you're going to be nearly there. But it's going to be the big heavy part of the fight out of the way. And you can get through it nice and smooth from there on out. Not to say that the rest of the rotation isn't worth learning. But just focus on the first bit first. Get that down and comfortable. And then go back and be like, okay, I've, I can do that every time now. I know what I'm doing. It's kind of like muscle memory. Let me see what the rest of it recommends. This information, of course, is in my video too for what I do but the pvme is just of course always updating and it's just a great place to go because all those pvmers that write this stuff are way above my level but in it i use so much food here all i do is drink my brews and eat my jellyfish and it's not good this is this is the solution to that use a blood reaver use a blood reaver at Rassiel. you need it. it it keeps you alive it stops you downing brews and it makes your life a lot easier it stops you dying it stops you dying a blood reaver is key you want to use this 100 percent now, a Blood Reaver is going to heal you if you add scrolls to it, and it will heal you a thousand health every time that you allow it to. What I mean by allow it to is you can actually set this to auto cast and you don't have to press any buttons or anything by putting it in here where you can see me doing it on screen and set this to three. You can set this to anything, right? It doesn't matter. But if you set it to three, this is the sweet spot from what I can tell and what other people have told me to try as well. And it just seems to work really well. So this just keeps you topped up in the fight, meaning that you're not really ever going to be at risk of dying unless you get nuked out super quick. Don't get me wrong. You're still going to need to heal yourself with food. It just means that you're not going to have to sit there just chomping on food the entire fight and not really doing anything else during your split soul rotation you are probably going to have to use a bit more food because you're not going to be getting any soul split back but reaver is going to stop you from just absolutely disintegrating now the reaver is going to kill itself to heal you when it heals you it takes damage off of its own life and eventually it will just suicide heal you and kill itself so to do avoid this you have to use the prism of restoration spell you have to use this or else he's just going to kill himself and it's not ideal. At the beginning of the fight, you just want to drop a Prism of Restoration and that'll keep your Reaver alive for the entire fight. You're fine. That's it. It's cool. Done. You may have to recast this towards the end of the fight, depending on how long it takes. But having this down will just mean that your Reaver will constantly be regening health and it won't murder itself to be able to keep you alive. One other thing that's worth mentioning for healing is you want to be using blubber jellyfishes, probably blues when you start out, but eventually you'll be able to swap to greens, which saves you a lot of money. And you can use uh, sourdough and brews, flasks or whatever. It's fine. I used to use those. Or you can use Guthix Restores. If you want to use Guthix Restores, this just won't drain your stats, meaning you can output some more damage because Saradome and Bruise, even if you're on an overload, will still temporarily drain your stats until the overload reboosts them back up. Guthix Restores are a little bit more expensive, but they're definitely worth using if you have the GP for it. And Ratsiel's insanely good money, like over 100 million GP an hour once you get it down. So, I mean, having a few extra costs on Restores is not a big deal, right? This, this boss is a freaking goldmine. Speaking of 
the start of the fight. When you start the fight, you want to surge all the way to the end of the room when you enter the actual room and surge right down to the end and blade a dive, whatever, get there immediately. And then stand on the back wall, like literally in the center of the room on the back wall. And then drop your Prism of Restoration here and then target cycle and attack Rasio. This is where you want to stand because the ghost walls that come out during the fight, they won't hit you here. I don't know why. If this gets fixed, if this isn't a thing at some point, you're watching this video like in the future and Jagex like, okay, no, we need to change this. Uh, this is a safe spot right now as of me making the video. Hopefully it doesn't get changed. It's been in the game a while. It probably won't, right? But this will just avoid all of the ghost walls. You don't have to dodge them. You don't have to do anything. You just stay here for the entire fight until the last phase when you'll just strafe side to side to dodge the explosions. Which prayer do you want to use? The entire fight, you're going to be using Soul Split. You're never going to use anything else unless you are just maybe using Protect from Necromancy when Rasiel throws his volley of souls on you. That might be the only time you want to do it. That, that's, that's it. With a devotion, maybe, or something like that. But otherwise, you want to just keep the Soul Split curse on because he will take your other curse off of you anyway. And Soul Split is absolutely fine as long as you're outputting the damage that you need to. And you also want to be using Split Soul beginning of the fight anyway. So you will just be keeping Soul Split on. That's it. In the last phase, he will just knock your curse off of you all the time. Your Protect Curse. So just use Soul Split. He can't disable that. And that's it. That is it. If you're unsure about what I meant by the volley of souls protection prayer, he will eventually stack up his souls and you want to use protect from necromancy when this happens. You can then use devotion, maybe use reflect or anything like that. Reflect, of course, will put some damage onto him when he does this. Devotion will just block the whole thing. Um, but this is probably the only time. If you don't use protect from necromancy here, he can one shot you from full. So definitely use it for this, as you can see on screen here. But otherwise, you can just go back to soul split straight after and then continue on healing from him or use split soul or whatever if you've got it next up when he is transitioning from the original phase to the final phase you actually can't deal any damage to him he is completely immune to damage but uh, you can still uh, like attack him you can still get souls from him and you can still apply debuffs to him as well so when he does do the difference from jumping from the bottom up to the top, you can apply death mark here if you haven't done it at the beginning. I prefer to do it during this part here because you're not doing anything else anyway. Uh, you can also throw a Vuln bomb. You can apply smoke cloud, all of this sort of stuff. If you haven't done these, uh, add them on at this point because it's a perfectly good time to do it. You can't do any damage, so you might as well. This is also a good time to drop another Prism of Restoration if your Reaver does need it for that little bit of extra healing. The last phase is probably where a lot of you guys are going to die. So this is probably going to be one of the biggest struggles for you to learn because you've got to move and walk side to side while also dealing damage to Rassiel as well. This is kind of a little bit awkward, but it is something you'll have to get used to. And Revolution struggles with this bit because to be able to use revolution abilities, your character has to be stood still, which kind of sucks. So you are going to have to press keybinds here to be able to deal damage to him while moving. The reason you need to keep moving is because he does little explosions on the ground around your character in random places, and these hurt a lot. You want to just move side to side, as you can see me doing in the example here, to avoid these the best you can. If you can kind of see where they are, then sure. But even I don't really look where they are anymore. I just step side to side, make sure I'm munching on food, make sure my Reaver's healing me up, and just focus on dealing as much damage as I can to Rasiel. Now, you definitely, definitely can, and probably should, throw in a Reflect here too. If you take any damage, which you're going to take damage, well, you will return the damage to him as well, and you're reducing the damage you take. You can use Debilitate as well, use like Disruption Shield if you have it, use a Resonance here and there. Like, if you need to use Defensives, just use them. It's worth it rather than you blowing up and dying and then having to restart the whole fight. But just step side to side. Don't go too far. Like, don't run miles down the other side of the room. Just take the distance that you can see me doing here and work down Rasiel's health. Make sure he's Vuln bombed, all this sort of stuff. And eventually, as long as you've used your um, Invoke Death or whatever it is, the Death Mark thing, he will absolutely just drop dead and then you can get his loot. And there you go. That is pretty much the tips that I have for Rasiel. The things that I have like when I've helped people learn the boss a little bit better. These are the things they kind of struggle with. These are the things that help out and make a bigger difference in other things. Uh, having the undead stuff, like a the amount of times people go, yeah, yeah, I know you can use the undead stuff, but I'm just missing this one. And it's like the ability one. And that's, that's pretty big. Like it's huge. Or the salve amulet. It's, it's absolutely huge. These are important to get and they will make a huge difference. So do not neglect them. I understand the undead ability is insanely expensive, like insanely expensive. But 
it is worth it if you have the money to invest in it. And if not, then of course, you're just going to get a little bit of a slower kill time, but you can still take on the boss. But if you're not quite meeting the kill times that other people maybe are, this will definitely be why. Hopefully you found some useful information in this video. If you did, please do let me know and leave a like on the video as well. Otherwise, if you are interested in checking out the merch store, you can check the link in the description of the pinned comment. And other than that, I'll catch you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.